What is going on, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, all of you beautiful people. I hope y'all having a fantastic day. As always, my name is ATX Crypto, aka Nathan, and today I just wanted to have some fun. I wanted to get your thoughts on what was going on with the Hex ecosystem, Pulse Chain ecosystem, Pulse X ecosystem, and let y'all know some of my thoughts as well as to what's been going on lately and how it's affected me and what's going on and what uh, plans and moves I'm making. So without further ado, I hope all of y'all are having a fantastic day. As always, let me say hello to some beautiful people. Hex Huddle coming in first. You never walk alone coming in second. We got the pothead, Mo Digging It. What up? How you doing, my friend? I hope all of y'all are having a fantastic day as always, boys and girls. So I was actually checking out a couple of things in regards to what had been going on. I know recently, I'm sure y'all are well aware of this at this point in time, but Richard Hart has been given a SEC allegation from them saying he's misappropriating funds. Now, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty as to like, could they even prove it in the first place? One, everything's on blockchain. If they wanted to give us the transaction hash and let us know where he's misappropriating funds, but at this point in time, they can literally just say whatever they want. And in fact, they have. So what I wanted to do was actually take a little gander as to how Hex or how another cryptocurrency had also been affected in a similar situation through another SEC allegation. Now, this actually came from the XRP crew. I know several people have been well familiar with them as they have been around for quite some time when we're actually talking about the overall XRP amount. However, XRP was sued, or should I say Ripple, was sued on December 22nd of 2020. So this is a weekly chart, and essentially what it shows is this blue line right here where I went ahead and made it the date as to when they were given the SEC allegation and what actually ended up happening. So. What's funny about it, and I know we've had some videos discussing this briefly, but what's funny about it is you can actually see if we move this just slightly over, you can see it didn't really have too much of an effect going up. And in fact, if we start from the prices going down, it would be right about this little area, which it had a nice little 70% dip from that candle wick to candle wick, uh, low to high or high to low. Now, this was within the span of two weeks because each of these candle wicks are in fact one week. So in the span of 14 days, we had seen this drop happen within it going down in price roughly about 70%. What's funny is what soon followed after. Now, again, this is a weekly candle. So one week here, two weeks here, three weeks here, four weeks here, and five weeks here, they are already back up 3X above that all-time low. Not all-time low, local low, my apology. So I was considering what this would actually mean and what it could do, of course, to our price of Pulse Chain or to our price of, uh, yeah, Pulse Chain and Hex. All the nice little cryptos that we're all watching and paying attention to at this point in time. Now, if we are kind of going with a similar mindset as to the fact that one, it has a, oh, let me pull this up here, PLS, cool. Just pulling up the chart right now for Pulse Chain on this one on the other side. But what I was trying to see on this one was, again, if it took roughly about 28 days or one month to get that nice little 3x wave, I wanted to see what we would be looking at if we had a similar situation happen with Pulse Chain as well. So whenever I actually pulled this little chart up over here, it's kind of interesting because you can see, of course, the date we got the SEC allegation or Richard Hart received the SEC allegation. It had dropped roughly about 70% within the span of roughly about three days. Now, granted, it's already started to recover. And that's even funnier because, again, this took on, again, XRP, roughly about 28 days to fully get that 3X back up again. And if we just do that same math as to what we we're actually looking at on Pulse Chain, we would actually break it down right here and do a nice little 3X above, roughly about 28 days in. So. Let me actually scoot this over just a smidge. Oh, here we go. Come on. All right, cool. So 28 days in would be right about here. And again, this would be right about that 200% mark, which would be a nice little 3x gain to whoever is purchasing down in these prices. Now, 
something that y'all have to understand at this time, at this price, is these are incredible, incredible buying opportunities. We didn't know exactly what was going to be the reason as to what was going to cause the price of Pulse Chain to go down the 80% like it typically does for new coins, but this finally allowed Pulse Chain to go down 80%. Now, again, in the span of 28 days, that puts us right at the end of August is kind of how I see it. What's funny of what we know as, as well is August is actually a blue moon, meaning there are two full super moon, full moons happening in the month of August, thereby making it a blue moon month. So this on the 30th is the day that we are expecting that full moon. So I am curious if we are going to see the same similar pattern as to what XRP ended up doing, because what I did was I actually broke this down on the moon phases as well. Now, if y'all aren't familiar with this, you can actually come over to you and just type in moon phases on the indicators over here. And you'll actually get a little indicator. Now, I do change mine to make it so that way the full moon is shown up top in a nice blue, new moon shown down below in the gray. You can, of course, adjust yours as well. So we do notice that it hit a full moon right here, a new moon right here. And then by the time full moon came around, new moon came that's when it really got that pump back to the 3x above ratio that we were looking at. And I'm kind of curious because if we do that same exact chart, and I can't do it on deck screener because I do not believe they have a moon indicator. Let me see if they have moon phases up and running on deck screener at this time. No, they do not. So we do know that the full moon is on the third or on the first and the 30th of August. So I'm curious to see, <clears throat> I'm curious to see how this is gonna play out. I am definitely paying attention to all the lines as to levels of support, resistance. You will notice we got a lot, we have several touches of support here in this range, which would typically mean we are going to see this as a resistance. So as the prices actually go up right now during this time, and as they end up going up, we may see some resistance when we first come back up to the 408 price, we see some rejection, retest it again. Normally you wanna see one, two, three, we break through and then we flip it as support. That's kind of what we're hoping for and aiming for. Now, again, that would, that would put us somewhere in the ballpark of the end of August to September timeframe as to how things have paid out, played out previously. But again, we have, if my opinion, a much stronger case than anything they had on the Ripple case as well. So I'm definitely curious as to what y'all's thoughts are on this whole situation. Do you think we end up in a similar moment in time? Whoops. <clears throat> do you think we end up in a similar moment in time where we end up roughly in the same thing, a 3x from the all-time low within the span, not all-time low, local low, within the span of a month? That would be pretty good. Again, guys, if y'all are getting Xs on your money within the span of days, weeks, months, or even just a year, that is phenomenal gain on your money. You have to understand that. So sometimes zooming out and realizing that a 2, 5, 10x gain, those are awesome gains, and y'all are definitely going to be wanting to take advantage of it the whole time. In fact, I have a whole profit-taking strategy that you use. So you take profits on the way up, you use the profits, DCA back in when the prices go down. And we do this for 12 to 18 months, folks, because at the end of 2024, we're going to reevaluate. We're going to see where everything stands. If everything's still looking solid and good and everything is looking like a nice little momentum of this moment going up and to the right, that is what we are looking for at this point in time. However, we don't know exactly what's going to bring that, and we don't know where we're going to be sitting on 2024. So we are going to want to reevaluate around that time frame to see if we are going to take a little bit heavier profits or if we're waiting until 2025. Now, 2025, mind you, <clears throat> typically it's 18 months after a Bitcoin happening is typically the top of a bull market trend. So if we go and look at the Bitcoin happening, that is supposed to be, or that will be happening in April of 2024, thereby making 18 months after that, October of 2025. So y'all have to understand if you're playing the game correctly, we should be getting the bull run all the way up until that point in time. However, we are going to be keeping our ear to the ground. Now, why is this important? Because if y'all are buying right now, that is such a better position than waiting to buy the top later. Now, that's when y'all are going to be selling a portion of your profits, okay? Now, I say this in, in, in a way that allows people to understand 
we do not want to sell our entire position. That's not something that I'm planning on doing. It's not something that I'll be sharing with any bit, anybody that I talk with. I do not want to close out an entire position ever. <clears throat> not with these cryptos, not Pulse Chain, not Hex, not Pulse X, not the incentive. I'm keeping them. So I was kind of getting your thoughts because what's funny is <clears throat> when Pulse Chain first launched, I felt myself going down the, I don't want to call it degenerate hole a little bit, but more so back in the trading realm of something that Hex prevented me from doing for the last couple years. And Pulse Chain launched and I felt myself watching charts again. I felt myself making these trades. The yield farms were popping off like crazy and I was trying to take full advantage of all these yield farms. But now I finally felt settled. I finally feel settled in a way that my yield farms are in a certain position, my stakes are in a certain position, and I'm earning passive income trustlessly Every single day while I sleep, while I work, while I don't work, while I nap, while I do whatever I want. Every single day. And I felt like that may have taken a little while to get there, but I no longer have the urge. I don't have that desire to continue to trade. And I was wondering, do y'all feel something similar right now, right? Do y'all feel something similar where you've kind of let the stress kind of, not necessarily stress, but the DJ and lifestyle subside a little bit? It seems like everything is starting to calm down a little bit. I'm not making the trades like I was. I'm not watching these prices like I was. I feel like everything is set up in a certain position that allows me to just be comfortable and nice and appreciative of what I currently have. Now, something that's very dangerous, y'all, something that's super freaking dangerous is chasing yield farms. And I want to share this because I said this in the very beginning when yield farms were first being introduced through testnet to be very careful and cautious about chasing the yields when they come out. So what typically, and what I mean by this, and I'll prove some examples, what I mean by this is most people have not farmed yield farm before this moment in time when PulseX allowed yield farming to become more well known amongst the ecosystem that we're in. What's funny about that though is people feel okay so here's here's what happens you get a yield farm and they start off with like 800 percent apr and it sounds incredible and you're making so much of this incentive token in the background every single day but they don't realize that that's the early stages and the more people that come in the less the yield but they still have the desire to continue to chase that yield and try to go back and earn the same amount of yield they were making when they first started earning 800% when they're only earning 100%. Now, the downside to that and the benefit of it, and I'll say both, the downside of it is you are coming in with so much more capital into the yield farms to maintain the same reward that you were getting when it was 800% APR, roughly about eight times more capital. Now, if you are only going in with 10% of your bag initially, but then by the time everything's all said and done, and you're now 60% of your bag is in yield farms, you see the difference as to now you're chasing. Now you're trying to, you had a plan, you had an expectation, you set forth a system that said, I wouldn't do more than X amount of my portfolio. And now you're chasing, and now you've allowed yourself to go outside of those parameters. And now you've allowed yourself to not only go outside those parameters, now open up the door to all these other yield farms that are also happening at the same time trying to continue to chase and chase and chase. And I caution everyone because that can be very, very dangerous. Now, obviously, there's some pros to it as well. The more capital that you're willing to put up with right now and put forth right now, the more return you're going to be given in the ultimate at the end of everything. So if you have the ability and the fortune to put up some more capital to earn some more yield, they're definitely going to be seeing some benefits of that, especially when we start entering the bull cycle of 2024. This is such a massive monumentous moment that I don't want anyone to be sleeping on, okay? So if you're looking at any of the prices right now in our ecosystem, by the way, Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, they are all looking freaking juicy right now, y'all. We've broken this down so many times, but the amount of capital that you can get for just $1, 
is absolutely insane right now. Absolutely insane. And if you just imagine that all the tokens that you're getting right now, one day are going to be worth $1, just imagine that. So you're taking your $1 now, you're getting all of these tokens in return, and then one day you're picturing all of the tokens that you bought right now to be $1. Now, how much would you do to actually truly benefit from that trade, from that purchase, from that transaction? That is where people are going to absolutely win. And so, and so obviously there's the benefit of you coming up with some more capital right now to earn some more yield, which in the long run could truly benefit you. But that also opens you up to many other areas such as impermanent loss. And if you aren't familiar with that, then this is where you're going to get left behind and where you're going to get wrecked and where you want to be knowledgeable and paying attention to how it all works. Because the basic example of impermanent loss, the easiest way to explain it is you bought two tokens, okay? Token one or token A goes off and goes shooting far, far up there, a 5x, a 10x. Token B does 0x change or maybe only 1x change. Now, what happens is because this token of token A went off and did this big old pump, all of the tokens that you have inside that pool, inside that pair, are going to be transferred into the one that did less which means that you took the one that did better, you transferred it into the one that did less, and now you're holding a position of coins, a much bigger bag of coins that did far less Xs than the one that did way more. So this is a benefit because in the future that could also offset. So it depends on time, term. it depends on a whole lot of stuff. And until, until you close your LP position, until you end your yield farm, until you pull that from ending it, you will not see impermanent loss, folks. You will not. Yes, you can calculate it. Yes, you can find a way to get through and see what you would be making and how much you would have and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're not looking to pull that position, I wouldn't necessarily worry and focus on that at this time because sometimes holding that position in the long run at, for a year or two and just letting that sucker ride is, could be the best thing you could do for yourself. I saw Cookie de Chocolata, hello, my love, how are you? Said, I'm absolutely relaxed, and that is the feeling that I've been having lately. It was such a, a funny little thing that I didn't even realize how, how quick that feeling came about and how it came upon me. It's because, like, I literally, like, again, you have to imagine, one, Pulse Chain has been out for 88 days now, y'all. Pulse Chain has been live 88 days now. That is absolutely wild. We've almost cussed the 90-day mark. And we know on average it takes anywhere between 90 to 180 days for a new token to come off, hit the ground, and then start running. And so we're kind of coming up to that little precipice right now where we're damn near at the bottom, y'all. So if y'all can scoop up anything at these prices right now, my God, you're getting such a good deal. Keep in mind, not financial advice. Things could go lower. It is crypto. Things are very volatile. So as you're onboarding friends and family, something that I feel like commonly gets left behind, and it was actually something that kind of hit home whenever I was watching the Highest of Stakes documentary, was the fact that so often do we want to get our partners, our buddies, our friends, our family on board, but we only tell them like these positive angles of it because we don't want to let them know of a negative side or a negative aspect. And it's as simple as saying like, dude, you don't want to miss out on this. This will be the next big thing. And then they go and they go hard, okay? And then the prices dip another 50, 60, 70, 80%. Now, most times people feel slighted at that because they feel like they weren't given all the information. And so some people will remain resilient and you can push them through. A lot of people are put off by that. And so if you just come to the friends and family and let them know, look, man, if you come in with some money, just know crypto is volatile. 60, 70, 80, 90% dips can happen. But in the long run, if you look at it and you zoom out, the chances are you're higher at the end than you were in the beginning. And again, like you can't make any assurances or promises, but you got to let them know the dips are in the game, folks. Don't be afraid to say that there could be another 30, 40, 50, 60% dip that could happen from the time you feel like you enter. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever felt like this, but every time I've made like a big purchase 
and crypto, I felt like someone was always looking over my shoulder and waiting for me to make that purchase. And then they would just start selling their tokens. And I was that person's, we'll say, exit liquidity. And I've always felt that like someone had this little thing over my camera, over my shoulder, watching me, waiting for me to make that big transaction. And then I would see the price dip, which is why I began doing things that would remove emotions out of the equations. And how do you do that? You do it by setting limit orders. Now, we don't have limit orders yet on Pulse Chain, or at least not any that I feel comfortable with disclosing. We do have limit orders available on Ethereum. So if you are buying any Ethereum or anything on the Ethereum network for Hex or anything else, Hedron, Icosa, make sure that y'all are learning how to set limit orders. Limit orders allow you to remove emotion out of the equation. And my gosh, what a beautiful freaking concept to just remove the emotion out of the equation. Because so often when we see these prices dipping, we feel like we want to buy, but then you also, greed comes into the whole picture and you say, I can go get so much more if I just wait for the price to drop another 5, 10%. Now that's wild thinking because sometimes just getting in, stop trying to hit home runs. I've said that before, right? Stop trying to hit home runs. Look, we just need to get on base. And if you're buying anywhere in these buy zones right now, you're most likely going to be doing very well off in the next one to two years if you look back and you saw, I bought here and I'm up here, okay? And that's what I think we're all missing right now is you're all missing that one concept of you buy low, you sell high. But again, we're going to be selling along the way. We're going to be taking profits along the way. And that's something that I always want to share with everyone as well. Let me say what's up to some beautiful people who ended up coming in through here as well. We got Crypto CPT. How's it going, ATX? I had a chance to see the highest of stakes. Great documentary. Absolutely. It was a wonderful, wonderful piece. Shout out to the highest of stakes team, directors, all the above who made that happen and made it possible because that thing did a great job. One, not taking sides. And when they say that, they truly do mean that. This is an information piece if ever I've seen. So if anyone has anyone curious as to crypto and hex in the ecosystem that is our ecosystem richard hart definitely highly advise them checking out the highest of stakes document all right we got uh hex Hoddle saying the moon indicator never fails lol good times yeah guys don't trade based on the moon indicator but it, it it's oddly shocking how full moons tend to bring bearish energy new moons tend to bring bullish energy and now we're gonna have two full moons in the month of august making it a blue moon system or a blue moon cycle, meaning we're probably going to be feeling the effects of this one a little bit harder. So I'm keeping my eye. We've already seen what happened when we got the SEC allegation. Happened to be full moon time, by the way, just in case you didn't know. But that whole energy that happened, we got the dip. We had the whole 60 70% drop. And then again, you start seeing things go back up and rally back up again. So I'm very curious to see how this will play out as well. Definitely looking forward. I think we're going to get kind of a calm capitulation zone for the next couple of weeks. Maybe we get some bullish energy. Waiting for that for the uh, August 30th time frame for that five to three day window before and after. I really want to see how that's going to play out. But I personally feel that September is going to be a great time for our ecosystem. Let's go. What's up, Crypto Bigfoot? How you doing, my friend? We're way stronger community than XRP, of course. Finbear, how you doing, my friend? I am absolutely relaxed. Me too, Cookie de Chocolata. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Hey, fam, good to see you. Good to see you as well, JL. How you doing, my friend? John Nice, what's good? How you doing, my friend? Academaciated. Since Uniswap delisted eHex, what's the best place to buy now? How does eHex work on Pulse Chain? Yeah. So, John Neese, to answer the question, um, I've always been a fan of CalSwap to start off with. Um, so, if you just go to swap.cal.fi, you can actually end up getting all of this information as well. So, uh, let me kind of hide this for a second. But swap.cal.fi not only allows you to swap the tokens of whatever you want to, the HEX token in particular. So, you can just come on in here and type in HEX and it'll pull that up right there. But you can also execute your limit orders through this as well. And I know I've gone through this in many other videos previously of how to execute a limit order, how to make sure you get it done, how to make sure they get filled, what to do, how to get the ladder done. You take limit orders when you buy, you take limit orders when you sell. 
there's a whole plethora of uh, videos that I've made previously as to how this works, but this is what I'm using at this time to get my hex. Now, again, this is if you were on the Ethereum network. CalSwap is not available yet at this point in time for the Pulse Chain network. So if you are looking to get that done, that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is just by going to PulseX.com. And by going to app.pulsex.com, it allows you to actually make the trade through their decentralized exchange. So what you can do is you'll see a whole long list of uh, coins. You'll have your Pulse, PulseX, Dihedron, Hex, but you'll also notice Hex from Ethereum. I've already got this selected. However, let me just kind of show you, but I can come in here and just click Hex from Ethereum. And again, if y'all need to know how to do this as well, I've got other videos breaking this down. If you need to find the contract address, you always want to be using Dex Screener when you're actually coming through and doing this. I know I've shared this in the past, but you'll just literally come in here, uh, type in Hex, and it'll pull up. Uh, I'll just pull up Hex WPLS. There you go. So right here we see eHex, which is what we're talking about. You can, of course, come on down and get the contract address if you are missing that right here. Right over here is the contract address. You can literally copy that and then come on back over to PulseX and literally just go ahead and type in that contract address. We've already got it hex from Ethereum on here, so I don't need to add it in. So again, it's already there, but I can just come in here and buy my stable coins or I can bridge over all of it and say if I have $2,000 and I want to buy $500 for the next week, for the next four weeks, then I can come in here and just do $500 worth. It'll get me 92,000 hex from Ethereum on the Pulse Chain Network. I can build up a big enough position, big enough bag, buy my $2,000 worth over here on the Pulse Chain Network. Once I have accumulated that bag of hex from Ethereum, I bridge it back over onto hex, uh, over, over to uh, Ethereum using the, of course, bridge as well. So just bridge.pulsechain.com. And you can actually come on in and see all of this information as well. If I was to actually come in here and connect my wallet, it'll actually go through here and connect everything. I can swap it from Pulse Chain to X or to Ethereum, and then boom, swap it, complete it, knock it out. Super simple, not too complicated, but that's kind of how I am going through and knocking this out at this point in time for the purchases. Now, of course, there are many other interfaces that we have which allow us to still buy hex you can use matcha.xyz you can use the uh gopulse.com they have their own user in or they have their own uh interface as well hedron has their own interface as well to purchase these tokens so just because it's delisted somewhere does not mean anything that just proves that uniswap is not decentralized which is kind of unfortunate because you know, Hex made Uniswap, but neither here nor there it sucks that they're going to give in. And it is what it is. And it's very often money motivated. So if they were offered something like $300 million, tough for them to say no, but apparently they ended up, uh, you know, not saying no. And now they're under the, uh, under the, 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 the wings of the three letter agencies, which fucking sucks, man. Straight up. ATX Crypto preaching facts on facts to us right now. Appreciate that. You never walk alone. Much love. Alan, how you doing, my G? ATX, we appreciate you with the tips and coaching. SMO Spider, thank you so much for the uh for the for the compliment and the comment. Yeah, of course. Yes, 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 yes. Everyone's saying hello to Alan, dude. Everyone loves Alan, man. Of course, Alan's such good peeps, man. Uh, much love to you, Alan. Yeah, you never walk alone. Hello, hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, cow swap is gonna be the one that we're gonna be using for. Uh, everything to be actually making it happen. You got the pool to he uh, yeah, plenty on V1 for eHex for purchase on the eHex and PHEX pool. Yeah, there's so much, there's so much uh, Ethereum or Hex on the liquidity for these tokens. So there's more than enough tokens available for purchase. And yes, yeah, so that is a great way of actually pulling it up on V2. Again, plenty of eHex to buy. You can bridge it back and stake it in on ETH. Yeah. So this is this is actually how I've been making my purchases lately is through the Pulse Chain Network. And guys, y'all don't have to just complete this on. You don't. It doesn't have to just be hex, right? Like, so if you know, for example, that you are looking for a Hedron token and you want to buy it, and you don't want to buy it through the protocol of Ethereum and the whole Layer One network over there 
then you can actually buy all those tokens over here on the Pulse Network and just bridge it back over once you've got a big enough bag of a big enough size. So I am a fan of getting things done that way. That's how it's been happening. But again, even right now, this is a phenomenal moment to say for 100,000 hex, it's going to cost you $537 right now for 100,000 hex. Now, again, let's make that a million and you'll see it's only $5,500 to get 1 million hex. And guys, you can do a lot with 1 million hex. I've pulled this up so many times in the past, but when you start getting into the million hex range, it allows you to start opening up the doors as to how you're planning on actually staking. So I know a lot of people like staking Icosa and Hedron, and that was something that we used to talk about quite often, as a matter of fact. Uh, you don't really hear people talk about it too, too much anymore nowadays. But the real benefit of that is you can actually get something along the lines of 37 T-shares right now for the low, low price of $5,700 or $5,400. Staking this sucker out for only 180 days gets you 37, we'll say 38 T-shares, and again, in the span of this amount of time, you will earn 44,300 hex additional, and then don't worry about the price. You can, of course, adjust this price to where you believe it may be in one year's time, but even if we just assume this is a nice little 10x difference at that point in time, that still turns $5,500 into something in the ballpark of $52,000, so that's what I'm looking for, and again, that's only on a simple 10x, bringing the price back up to five cents which is definitely a feasible number to attain so just keep that in mind t-shares are in fact something i have been preaching for quite some time and i am a massive fan of continuing to preach t-shares because why you get paid trustless yield every single day zero 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 utc time pays you like clockwork you don't have to rely on any intermediary any middleman you don't have to rely on nothing doing nothing besides code executing which has done so flawlessly for the last three and a half plus years folks we are almost coming up to four years of hex being launched can you imagine four years in meaning we're almost one third of the way through the first 55 55 stake that's pretty freaking wild folks because we only got two thirds the way to go and it seems like time is just flying freaking by so keep that in mind when you're looking at things in the micro perspective that right now we're seeing these from a day-to-day -day type view or week-to-week -week type view, shit, even month-to-month -month type view, folks, we need to be looking at this from a year-to-year -year type view, you know? And that's kind of where I'm looking at it right now is from Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, what are we doing in 2024? What are we doing in 2025? And that's what really matters from my personal preference on that one. Uh, yeah, no unicorns. Yeah, exactly. Not oh. They have done burn the bridge, and it is what it is. Thanks, ATX. So Hex from Ethereum on Pulse being bridged back over to ETH will cause the E-Hex to not become wrapped. Is that how that works? That is exactly how that works, Mr. John Neese. So essentially what we are doing on the Pulse Chain Network is we are buying the wrapped version of Hex from Ethereum, so that way when we bridge it back over, it unwraps itself and becomes regular Hex on the Ethereum network, that work that works with all the things as well. So if you're buying Dai, if you have USDC, USDT, anything that says from Ethereum network on there, and again, I'll share this for y'all briefly just to keep it simple on this one. But anything that says from Ethereum, and again, you can pull this little drop down: stablecoin from Ethereum, Hedron from Ethereum, right? Hex from Ethereum. All these tokens. Shiba Inu from Ethereum, right? All these tokens can actually, they're, they're already wrapped in this form. So when they bridge back through, uh, back into the Ethereum network, they unwrap themselves. And now it becomes a full-on token that you can actually use to make it happen. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense for you, John Nees. Appreciate the question. As always, you never walk alone. T-shirts are so cheap. As a matter of fact, they are so can cheap yeah dude, they literally are man I, I look at these i look at these prices and guys that was i did this little setup on this one for a freaking for a freaking one uh for a 180 day stake like imagine if you kick this sucker out you can almost triple the t-shirt so if you kick this out 
to 10 years because maybe during this time you've been able to accumulate 10 million hex during this time. So you want to send one of them out to 10 plus years and just starting with that one alone to 36, 360 or 3,650 days, that's going to get you 103 t-shirts, folks, 103 t-shirts. Do the math on that as well. Earning 6.5 hex per day per t-shirt, earning roughly 600 hex per day based on those numbers alone. And imagine, just do the math yourself. Even if we're just at 550 cents in 10 years time, you are earning $300 per day in yield. And you would have been earning $300 per day in yield. Because you continue to earn that hex no matter what. It lowers your average. It lowers your DCA. It's a continual DCA. Every single day you're earning more as if you were buying hex. And that is what we're looking at right now. So, again, I've shown this in the past as well. But, shoot, I'll show it again for S's and G's. You start out with $5,400 today. This sucker just needs to reach $0.50 cents in 10 years' time. And you will have earned... $1.9 million during that time, you would have earned 2.9 million hex in yield, which is massive because you only put up 1 million in the beginning. During that time, you've been earning an 6.5 hex per T share. Pretty freaking solid on this, y'all. Pretty freaking solid. And I'm a big fan of when it comes to the T share, the hex, the ecosystem of all of that good stuff as well. So, um, yeah, this moment in time reminds me so much of the pandemic when Bitcoin had crashed below 4K. Yeah, it makes sense as well. Uh, everyone thought it was all over that day. Bitcoin went down to 68K. Or Bitcoin then went to 68K. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it got it got so cheap. I think it got to like $3,800 or something during that time. And then it just went, Beep! it's a nice little 20X of that money on that one. Whoever made that purchase. Uh, watch X does. Those facts on facts team alliance like i'm right there with you and again down and say guys even just getting back up to 50 cents years that's 100x from the current price of where it's at but 100x your money in 10 years time plus all the interest accumulated during that time plus all the yield that you've earned and actually being a uh, miner in the ecosystem my freaking goodness you smash all the previous things and again I don't want everyone to get caught up in these numbers because what happens is you're going to see your numbers go up. 10 years is plenty of time. It goes by fast. We've seen it happen. Anyone with kids knows that. But you're going to see the account go from 5,400 to 50,400 to 500,400 and then down to 100,000 to 60,000 and then go back up. And this is going to happen it's with all crypto, folks. There are ebbs and flows. There are ups and downs. And what saves you from yourself is staking hex. So don't sleep on staking hex, y'all. For real, for real. For sure, Johnny. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love for all of you being here as well. Can someone loan me $5,200? <laughs> Yo, I'm right there with you, John. <laughs> Who got it? Time flies depending upon your age. Can you all remember what you did 10 years ago? Just to get an old photo on social media and realize no time at all. Get them T-shares now. Yeah, what's even crazier, so I got out in the military in 2010. And so I'm already looking at it from that perspective. Like, yo, I would have already been like out, like I've been out of the military for 13 years. And that's wild to me because this shit still feels like yesterday in some situations as to what my brain does and thinks about. So it's wild the fact that that shit's 13 years ago. And that shit feels like it was yesterday, y'all. Yesterday. So time does definitely fly regardless of what you want to believe. Just go back and look at anything like he just said on pictures of what you had been doing back then. And you will see time freaking flies by. Um, you can also accumulate a solid 2 million hex on Pulse Chain and do a 90-day stake for a while to have passive income while your 55-55 stakes mature. Imagine doing all of that uh at hex at 40 cents hell at one dollar my gosh dude my gosh money printer for days my friend like money printer for days so again those numbers that we just said a second ago was was <laughs> one 100 t-shirts was a span of a 
10 year steak is what you would get on a million hex. But let's just do what Mr. Alan Fizeme has talked about as well and do a 720 day steak running on average of about 2 million hex, which would be about $10,000 $10, at the current price for hex on uh, hex on Ethereum. And again, you can double that if you want to get it for hex on Pulse Chain. It's about a two to one ratio right now, just to keep it simple. So just to make it simple, if you want to do the math on that, you definitely can. The amount of t-shirts you will get will be the same for the amount of dollars that you spend to get them. So keep that in mind as well, which is part of the argument going back to, is it better just to go with hex from Ethereum because you get so much bang for your buck right now at this point in time with the current prices. So keeping that in mind, you get on average roughly, yeah, 2 million hex on average for 720 days, I guess. We're going to do a, what would you say, 90-day rolling stake? That makes more sense. So a 90-day rolling stake at this point in time will get you roughly about 72 T-shares. 72 T-shares getting paid that every single day, 6.5 hex per T-share every single day. Means every day you're getting 468 hex, all of it, for even just 90 days. Now, the beautiful part is during that time, up to 90 days, you will have earned almost 43,000 hex just by doing that 90 day stake. And again, imagine back at 40 cents and imagine that dollar when you do this rolling day stake during that time. Pretty freaking solid stuff right there as well, y'all. So just keeping all this here, let me just kind of see what we would actually end up being. If we just go back up and do a 2X, you turn 10,000 into 20,000, but also that additional yield as well. Hi, cuties. Hi. Oh, hi, pretty girl. Got the puppies coming to visit real fast. We're going to have a new puppy in the house soon. I can't pick her up yet. She's not at the level where I can show her off just yet. You think so? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hold on, Journey. Hold on. Jenny. Journey, come here. Journey, come here. Jimmy. All right. No, it's all good, baby. We tried. It was fun. All right. <clears throat> but yeah, money printer, money printer, money printer. <laughs> yeah, the Hex t-shirt uh, always blows my mind. It, these numbers, when guys, like, do them. Fun. It's fun to do. It's absolutely a blast. Excellent stream, ATX. Can you make a video on creating a staking ladder? I know my staking ladder has served me well. Uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I have a big... Uh, I'm a big fan of staking ladders. There are different many ways to get it done and benefit you in multiple areas. It depends on are you long-term minded? Are you short-term minded? Do you want to have rolling stakes? Do you want to go based on bull cycles in the previous system? So there's definitely easy things to do. But the easiest thing to do, just to make it simple, is if you have, we'll say, we'll just say 1.5 million hex, just for ease of numbers. You do a one-year stake with 100,000 hex in every single stake for 15 years and just set that sucker out. Go one 15, 15, or what, go one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, six year. Just do a whole staking ladder the whole time. Now, the benefit of that is come the first year, if you don't need the money or the hex at that time, you can then take the yield, take this principle, and restake it out another 15 years to continue getting the same amount of T-shares, if not triple the amount of t-shirts that you end up getting and then wait until you actually see the money come through because what happens is when 2024 rolls around we're going to be looking and be like damn hex is at 30 cents it'd be nice if i had a stake ending but i don't have one ending until 2028 or something silly like that i hear that all the freaking time and i don't know why someone doesn't just go long and then short and then long and then short there's different ways of filling in a ladder if you're just accumulating hex over a period of time and each time you accumulate, you stake it. There are different strategies to it, but yeah, I, I may make a video on the whole staking ladder, whole situation as well. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the idea on that one as well. Spent all of my money on topping off my PLS and PLSX bags. Yeah, John. So that's never a bad thing. One thing I've said in the past as well. It's at these prices. Keep in mind, go like a sniper, get one of them, knock it out, be done with it. So if your goal is to have 200 million Pulse X or 210 million Pulse X to be a squid in the ecosystem, go get yourself 210 million Pulse X. Once that goal is hit, transfer any money that was going to Pulse X on those purchases into the next coin, whether it be Pulse or Hex 
or whatever token that you showed so, so desire, but you transfer it and then you go knock that goal out as well. So if your goal there is 100 million or 200 million pulse, go get that goal next. Once that goal is attained, go knock out the next one. Treat it almost like a snowball strategy um, in terms of how to build this bag. You can also go with the safer route, which is just distribute all three into a purchase. So if you have $1,000, do 333 in hex, 333 in pulse, 333 in pulse X, and just run it that way. There's different mini strategies to be done on that one. I'm a fan of knocking out the goal, getting it done, and making sure the focus is on. Get the blinders on, y'all. Stop being distracted by the freaking new shiny objects that are coming out. There's going to be a, a lot of new shiny objects. I started this video off <clears throat> talking about yield farming, and I really do mean that. Put the blinders on when it comes to yield farming. Set up your system in a way that you feel comfortable in making sure that you're earning that passive income, but be careful about chasing the yield. That is a very dangerous game to get caught up in, and I just want to share that word of advice for or word of caution for anyone who may be looking to yield farm and may not be familiar with it as well. Appreciate that as well. My knees and my back tell me every day how time flies. <laughs> no kidding. My knees, and, my knees sound like industrial machines grinding. <laughs> oh, I also say PHEX only because fees are low, 90-day rolling stakes. 1 million to 2 million PX. Yeah, so again, if you're if you're actually end up doing that as well, uh to get 2 million, it would cost you uh well, let's just do the math on it. Let's just see exactly. So to get 2 million, it would cost you roughly about $22,000 at this time to get 2 million hex on pulse chain. And again, this isn't something that sometimes people have the money to just drop right away and just get it done. Sometimes people accumulate a position over a portion of time go that route. So if your goal is to attain a certain amount of hex during that time and then start staking it. That's definitely one way of doing it. At these current prices, it would cost 22000 to get there. But that is a, I mean, <laughs> based on where we've been in the past, my God. I mean, we could do the, obviously the fun math on it, but 2 million hex at one point in time, even at 50 cents, used to cost a million dollars. And you're getting it for 22000 So, I mean, I'm just like, Keep that in mind when you're running through some of these things, right? Um, when you're running through some of these numbers, because these are absolutely wild, 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 wild times. Why do Cialis commercials keep finding me? <laughs> oh, what's good, EO Sports? How you doing, my G? <laughs> Much love to all the Patreon supporters as well. LOL, Johnny, it's an age thing. Just take the alpha pills that Alex Jones sells you. <laughs> First set up the ladders. <laughs> Once you do that, have some crazy 55-55 t-shirts, you can start thinking about doing short-term stakes. T-shirt rate, don't stop for no one. Straight the F up, yo. Go long. Like, send that sucker long, dude. I don't... If you if you have any investment at your job onto the Social Security and you think that's going to benefit you in the future, the 401k, the IRAs that are out there, the HSAs that are out there, and if y'all are thinking that you're going to be able to benefit from that, in the near future, you're absolutely freaking crazy. So like zoom out and just be like, all right, cool. If I'm willing to give up my money for this measly fucking 3% or whatever the case may be, I'm going to send some out long to 15 years. I'm just going to send it out because I can't even claim that stuff until I'm 65 and a half years old or 59 and a half years old. Or what kind of trash is that, man? You're putting your money away. And then at the end of it, you're going to be looking at a two to three extra money. Get the F out of here with that, man. Come on, man. Y'all y'all know better than that. But definitely start taking the alpha pills that Alex Jones sells you, and you'll be able to have all the memory of everyone. <laughs> These become more scarce over time. They certainly do. Uh, you can also sell them to stables, only take what you need, to turn into fiat, then keep some stables to buy any future dips. Two birds, one steak. <laughs> Lol. That is funny. The latest dip SEC helped me move up the Sea Creature League table in PLS, PLSX, Hex, and Incentive all together. I'm happy as F. Dude, I'm happy for you. You never walk alone. Wait, did y'all see that 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 new thing on Deck Screener? Uh, how it shows the the ecosystem of the whales and stuff like that? This is pretty darn freaking cool if you ask me. And I'll kind of share it with you again just to have some fun. But I thought this was pretty darn interesting. Not that, because that's garbage. We already know that website is trash. Uh, here we go. Show this tab. Cool. So this is what I actually thought was pretty interesting the other day is they actually, for deck screener, broke it down where you can... Let me get rid of some stuff over here. Get rid of that. All right, cool. 
and you can actually get rid of and I don't even need the chart. So you can actually see all these little leagues over here. Like how freaking cool is this? Now, what I found out just through, you know, looking in and trying to do a little bit more research in is they actually break it down as to like where you fall in the ecosystem. So whether or not you're a shark or whether or not you're a shrimp, whether or not you're a whale or a dolphin, they break down all these different ecosystems. This is only for Pulse Chain. And I think this is so freaking bullish that they went through and did this for our ecosystem because we have the staker league. We have the staking league. And it's been something that's been around for some time. And it's really freaking cool how they did this. But what I love about it is it actually breaks down how much someone has bought, how much someone has sold. And of course, I'm a data nerd. I love seeing this information. So I'm seeing this person bought $130,000 worth. They sold 132000 and ended up getting 2 k in profit out of all of it. So I see that kind of stuff. And I'm like, bro, you did so much freaking movement for a, a 2 k Like, <laughs> that's wild. You're talking about $130,000. Then you could go do that in 2 k Like, put that sucker up into one of the farms. My God, have y'all seen what the math looks like on this stuff as well? This shit gets stupid. But if you're in one of the farms on this one, and we'll just say you're in this incentive pulse pair, for example, and you have $130,000 at this point in time, that's going to net you roughly about 113 incentive token per day. So at today's prices, at today's rates, at today's APR, at today's everything, $313 per day. And they're over here trading. They're over here doing these trades, trying to buy, trying to sell. Like you can literally go make two grand within the span of less than eight days. Like, uh, what, what is that actually? Let me ma make sure the math is all correct on this one. $2,000 divided by $313, 6.3 days. So in less than one week's time, I guess I could have done that as well. In less than one week's time, you could actually be sitting on $2,200 on the incentive token at these prices. At these prices. Imagine if the incentive token just goes up 2x and you're like, boom, instead of $300 per day, you're making $600 per day. So this person over here trading that freaking wild trade, like you see, like you see what I'm saying? Like this is a wild trade for two thousand dollars. You could literally go put that sucker up into one of the pools, get in, get out within less than a week, and go make yourself two thousand dollars if that's what you're about. But let's be most people are here for the long haul. So let's just say they stuck it out for thirty days at today's rates, at today's prices, at today's everything. That's still ninety seven hundred dollars. And I guarantee this person had spent more than one month of time making this happen. So because this is in the span of the last 30 days, right? And so I'm looking at it from the same perspective, like they could have gotten so much more money had they just been in the farms. But again, dangerous game to play. You start chasing them yield. But hey, fun fact for anyone who was in here. I love the fact that they did this kind of stuff. It lets you know what they bought, what they sold. Are they just buying? Are they just selling? And what I'm noticing is a lot of these people are trading, folks. A lot of these people are buying. A lot of these people are selling. Kind of interesting that I don't really just see straight up just buys, but it is still, it is what it is, right? And so I'm just watching this, just paying attention to it while I can, because I think this is some very interesting stuff, y'all. Very interesting stuff. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are on that as well, as a matter of fact. Um, what do we got here? Deck screener did it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Here, hold up. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of all this. So you just said me too. Deck screener showing wallet status. Yeah, it's really cool how it actually does it. Deck screener did it for Pulse Chain first, then other chains. Haha, they love it. Did did they do it for other chains? It's funny as I have looked on um the other chains to see if they've already went through and done it on the other chains. If they had, I do find that to be pretty freaking cool. I'm not gonna lie, if they are in fact it on other chains because it's such a they do have it on the Ethereum network too. Hey, all right, bet, dude. That is some fun freaking stuff. Alan Fizzman, I didn't know that they were doing it on other chains. And again, to anyone who may be wanting to see this as well, I guess I'll share it on screen. But this is on the Ethereum network. And again, this is just a random. Okay. This is just a random little token right now that I just pulled up real fast just to kind of see. But yeah, do they do it on Arbitrum? Uh, just a random token here. I guess that one's not going to do it for Arbitrum because maybe that's not a good, uh, good pair. Let's look at the... No. Okay. So it's... So far, only on the Pulse Chain Ethereum ecosystem. Yep, doesn't seem like they are doing it over on Binance either at this time. 
cool. So, so far from what I can see, only on Pulse Chain and Ethereum. I don't know if they're on other ones. Of course, I can keep diving through and diving in and checking it out. I don't see them on any of the other networks, but that is still pretty freaking cool that they are bringing it to other chains. Uh, big fan of what Dex Screener has done and what they're doing. I love that little adjustment as well. I love seeing that little information. I'm sure this has come up before, but what's the best amount of EHEX to stake at a time? I have a minimal amount in six stakes. What should my goal be for the amount of EHEX, PHEX I should attain? Everyone's got their own number, man. Like, for real, for real. That's such a hard question to even answer because to everyone that 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 can completely change anything. So if your goal is to try to earn like a thousand dollars per month in passive income, then you may have to figure out how many t shares you need to make in order to earn that passive income of a thousand dollars in a month at these prices. And then just know that as prices go up, it actually just furthers the amount of gain that you end up getting overall. There's not necessarily like a set good amount, like as much as you can get, I guess, like whatever you feel really comfortable with. So I've always had goals in my head for certain uh, levels of attainment for certain tokens that I've wanted to get. And because of these prices have continued to drop, I've been able to not only attain that level, but surpass that level. So I've actually had to increase the mindset that I had that I thought previously was a good amount of tokens that now I look at it and I'm like, this is just the beginning and precipice of what I can do. So get as many as you can while you can and know that over the next 12 to 18 months, we're continuing to DCA y'all. This isn't like a buy now and wait for 12 to 18 months. That's one way of doing it. Sure. But I want to continue to DCA for the span of 12 to 18 months, no matter the price. And the reason why is because you still get to build more of the token that you want. So by the time 12 to 18 months roll around, you look at the price at that time and you're like, wow, this is such a better position than I was in before I can take some profits. I can do X, Y, Z. That's what everyone's looking for. How much money they want to attain, what the price they think it may be in the future and how many tokens they're going to have. There's not necessarily like a set good answer on that, but I'm a fan of get as much as you can, especially on the EHEC side. Things are super cheap right now. But again, that's just your decision to make. If you're planning on doing rolling stakes and shorter stakes, Pulse Chain is the way to go personally because that's going to benefit that 60, 90 day rolling stake strategy. Whereas I think Ethereum could be the way to play because you get so much bang for your buck right now that even if it's a two to one ratio and five years from now or 10 years from now, you're still doing pretty darn good. So if Hex on Pulse Chain ends up reaching $10 and Hex on Ethereum ends up reaching $5 and all these numbers are happening, you still, the ratio is the same in that regard. So whether you bought here and you got it $10 or you bought here and you got it $5, ratio is the same. It's a two to one ratio. So get as much as you can, man. There's not like a set number by any means. Uh, they know we appreciate on-chain data. Other, other chains don't. They really do. Um, another good point. Appreciate that. Yeah, I really do. I found out that 50,000 EHEX, no less than seven years is best, but anything below 100,000 EHEX for me has gone 55, 55, uh, John Neves. Yeah. So I would be, yes, easy way to say definitely, um, anything less than 50,000 X, I caution be short term on any of the stakes for any reason. Um, even trying to play out the bull cycle. So like, let's just play out some numbers. Assuming you had 50,000 hex staked right now, and again, we can always pull up the exact numbers. You know what? Freak it. Might as well. We're already in this situation. We might as well do some fun math on this one, right, folks? So how many days is it until um, – how many days until – yeah, we'll do December of 2024 first. We'll just start there. So I'm going to assume it's, yeah, 481 days. Okay, cool. So in 481 days – what do you end up getting at today's rates, at today's prices, and all of that good stuff? Just doing a simple, uh, basically one and a half year stake, right? Because that's taking us out to December of 2024. That would get you roughly about two T shares right there. Now, two T shares can be a dangerous world to be playing in. And the reason why is because if the prices don't pan out and be a little bit higher, even just going back up to a penny then just know that this $270 right now, multiply it by two if you're on the Pulse Chain Network, just be play along with me here. 
five hundred dollars here or two hundred dollars, whichever one you decide to go with. We'll still get you 2.2 T shares. We'll still get you roughly about 6,800 hex during that time. And so, no matter what, this is the amount of yield that you would have made if it just reaches a penny in a year and a half's time. Now, a lot of us are anticipating that we go much higher and say, let's just say we end up reaching 25 cents. Maybe we're even higher than that as well. Then that still pulls you in this world. So, this would be $1,700 worth of yield. Now, keep in mind the gas fees. Or something you have to be cautious of. That's why people are fearful of the Ethereum side, if you will, because the Ethereum price could also be higher. And so it may end up costing you $400, $300, $100 to end a stake. And that kind of cuts away into some of the profits. So you just want to make sure that however long you end up staking can actually end up reaping the rewards for the benefit no matter what, regardless of which way you stake, okay? And again, I don't know if that got a little confusing and I apologize did but you know hopefully that makes a little bit more sense um yeah that's a good way of doing the math though just break it down alan fizme over a hundred thousand or less than a hundred thousand sometimes doing that 55 55 stake is just easy pure transparency cannot be argued with love it <laughs> exactly what's up y'all how you doing thanks alan i found hacks hella late i have work to do dude you <laughs> hey don't even worry man no time like today facts let me just read that off no time like today DCA grind is amazing. At these prices, it's amazing. Someone bought my $30,000 bag for $500 not ago, so chew on that. Yeah, exactly. They started with ETH, but PLS was first. Yeah, so I'm right there with you, man, because like I, I wasn't buying hex below a penny back in the day. Like I was right there on that cusp, and now I'm seeing these little positions open. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. These are these things that we've always said you wanted, right? Like and this is a time where if you just go back, if you were a part of the and you were buying it 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, anywhere in that range, all the way during that time, one cents, two cents, three cents, five cents, anywhere during that time, and you won't buy now, you got your logic backwards, right? You got to flip your mindset on that one for sure, for sure. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Opportunity costs. Yeah, exactly. Things are super juicy. Bull cycles can bite you with the gas fees. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. The bull cycle can bring that gas fee real fast into the equation. So even with the 50,000 hex that we just looked at, even it going back up and doing a 2x time or even back up to 25 cents during that time, you want to be mindful that your gas fees are going to outweigh the overall yield that you're going to make. I'm sorry, you want to make sure that your yield outweighs the overall gas fee that it'll cost you. And so sometimes uh, there was there was a really cool um gas fee calculator as well gas fee um end stake ending a stake nah i'll find it later but there's a really cool little uh, gas fee calculator that can kind of do some really cool stuff for you again i'm not really going to worry about that too much right now at this point in time x big start all right cool well guys that's we're gonna wrap up this stream right here appreciate all the love much love to every single one of y'all i hope y'all have a fantastic day and i'll catch you tomorrow where we actually will be having i believe nerd girl and black hex skin but definitely nerd girl and i believe black hex skin on pulse nation either way tune in catch y'all later peace